sure placements are important and placement report is an important indicator of the success yes. of the college but that should not be the only indicator Correct. you measured the currency of mm-hmm. your mba through how many vcs were created by the mba program through how many entrepreneurs were created by the mba mm-hmm. program because that is your network yeah. and your network is your net worth so essentially mm-hmm. your outcome was not your placement right. but this network of vcs and entrepreneurs and consultants and product managers correct who then will help you build your life in the future to me the fact that we had uh six vc offers this year alone yeah. and this is for the first time we had any vc offers is uh, i think this is probably the first time any college in india has had six vc offers but 10 years down the line i'm sure there's going to be an ecosystem where these people are investing in each other if i look at the median ctc we're looking at something like 33.01 the highest ctc in the report is 67.33 which is the right one but the actual on paper offer of that student is 1.04 crores yeah. so 75% which is 25.54 is what we're looking as your base salary and then uh, another 14% is what we're looking at first year resop that again amounts to 4.76 lakh and then the variable which is mostly your performance based variable is going to be another 10% of the ctc which is like 3.4 lakh so another year mac how does it feel uh good good definitely good ha uh-huh. It's been uh, and I I've been here to witness the second uh, placement rep- uh, report. Yeah. So a lot of experience under my own belt on how things work here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And this is our <laughs> third placement report now. This is. And you know we always make uh, placement reports a bigger deal than I think it should actually be. And I know you have some you know opinions on that. What do you think? I mean, you know, in India we value and we I don't know what the word for it is, but we I think aggregate is we worship <laughs> placements and placement reports. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I honestly have very strong and uh, polarizing views, okay, and okay. I usually don't share it publicly because I know how important it is. So I'll, I'll share my own experience, okay? And uh, of course, I'd done my MBA outside, uh, but uh, I don't remember seeing any college's placement report because I just did not even think of that as the concept. Mm. I'd gone out to do an MBA because I really felt that there are these specific skills that I'm lacking, mm-hmm. and if I'm if i am able to fulfill those skill skill gaps that i had then i'm sure and certain that like the placement or or the job is an that outcome just happen by itself. it's not the like it's a means uh to a start and not the end in any yeah. way right so when when i joined here and i i, I don't know if you uh, remember you on my conversation i actually joined as the placement director yes yes and when you mentioned that make this is what i want you to do i almost laughed on your face yeah, i was yeah. like pratham are you sure this is yeah. you want me exactly. to be using my time and resources Correct. i remember that uh, at my home yeah exactly yeah and for me i still continue to feel that because to me the idea of just grandizing the outcome instead of focusing on actually the details mm. because you know even if you look at the placement report and typically how a student looks at it is that he look at the highest number the ctc average the lowest number the top 20 percentile etc but how do i how do i communicate the essence and the journey behind that 20 uh, like you know that average it, right? it just completely misses the point that you know you are getting prepared for something much bigger yeah. how long will your 30 33 35 lakh like ctc help Last, you yeah. and if you're not able to succeed in your job anyways i failed as an institute Correct. which is why this obsession around placement report is something i'm not very proud of to yeah. be honest and uh, yeah you yeah, i think we measure the success of a college through its placement report correct which i think is so faulty i think is is what you're trying to say right basically precisely there is so much more to a student yeah. than just what the placement number he gets at yeah. the end of the day is and so much more to a college than the average ctc figure correct correct but you know to be very honest while i agree with you we still have to publish a placement report yeah. we still have to make it the primary call to action on our website yes and i feel slightly i'm very proud of the placement outcomes by the way mm-hmm. and we'll come to that in a <laughs> moment but i feel slightly sad that our work that we put in mm-hmm. our entire team mm-hmm. the hard work that we put in the professors the masters who Correct. fly in from all over the world Correct. at the end of the day their contribution to the world to the students the society comes down to an average ctc number correct yeah, which so. which is where it's unfair which is where if you if you look at it when i was in my mba school we used to talk about the ecosystem the network the specific professor whose class was insanely good and we wouldn't miss it for anything in the world and i do not remember unless people were actually preparing for an interview and they needed some support from each other 
I think that's when we spoke about jobs and placements, yeah. and that's an ecosystem I would wish that we as a country uh, are able to adapt to, and uh, would love to be the front runner in that. And again, I don't think it will diminish the impact on the placement. Because if, if I'm doing everything has, yeah. right, if mm. I'm doing everything right, if the input is right, the output has to be right, right? right? It's a game of input-output, right? Yeah, completely. So. It's so true, and I'm so glad we addressed this right <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. And whoever's watching this, you know, sure, placements are important, and placement report is an important indicator of the success yes. of the college. But that should not be the only indicator. Correct. Whichever college you want to go to, or you know, you, you want to go to. You really should visit the campus, mm. talk to the alumni, Correct. not make your decision on the basis of a placement number. Right. 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 It's so important. And you know, you were mentioning something very interesting just before this that you measured the currency of mm -hmm. your Stanford MBA through how many VCs were created by the MBA program, through how many entrepreneurs were created by the MBA mm. program, because that is your network. Yeah. And your network is your net worth. So essentially, mm. Your outcome was not your placement, right. but this network of VCs and entrepreneurs and consultants and product managers Correct. who then will help you build your life in the future. So what's interesting, and again, I have some uh, uh, interesting insights from my own time as a student, was that, think of it, like, you know, for VCs, the customer is a startup and vice mm. versa, right? And there is so much unfair advantage if your classmate with whom you, you know, you hung out uh, had like, you know, the... Uh, most vulnerable times of your life in front of that classmate yeah. and now he's going to be ready to share the insights about how does a VC think uh, or how does a startup think and you you know you, you have so much trust in the character of each other mm. that you would invest in your in your classmate, classmate in a blink of an eye and to me the fact that we had uh, six VC offers this year alone yeah. and this is for the first time we had any VC offers is, uh, I think this is probably the first time any college in India has had six VC offers right and I can't think of any <laughs> IM, ISB I, I mean yeah probably yeah. Uh, so to me that is so satisfying as a campus lead that yes this is what my contribution to this cohort was that you know 10 years down the line, I'm sure there's going to be an ecosystem where these people are investing in each other. Each other. Yes. That's so beautiful. And it's going to snowball, right? Every year now, because there are six of them, they're going to actually groom the other students in the current cohort. And it's already happening. Yeah. And I feel like we're already so ahead in right. our game. I think in the next cohort, we already <laughs> have... A we have two people already interning uh, with, with VCs. Firms, yeah. yeah. And, and I think one of them is probably a full-time. Yes. He started early. <laughs> I mean, it, it's the second month of the program Correct. right now. Correct. You're right. I mean, I think the VC offers will definitely become a catalyst to yes. the entrepreneurial culture we are trying to correct, build here. Correct. Yeah. And imagine the number of people who are going to then end up being job creators and not job yeah. seekers. So to me, that's what helps me like really sleep well at if night. If my roommate is a VC, then yeah. I have more confidence in starting up now. Correct. He's going to actually be able to tell you the white spaces. He's going to be able to tell you how a VC thinks when he's evaluating a term sheet. What, what is it that is important and vice versa. For Absolutely. VCs, if they're not deploying their capital in the right startup, startup that's also an equally challenging problem. And the deal flow that they're going to get through their own classmates here. Yeah. To me, it's a beautiful ecosystem. And I've seen that in Stanford. And I think that's what inspires me yeah. a lot. No, I think, you know, when everyone in your cohort is a consultant... <laughs> I mean, you will just be competing with each other right. for, uh, you know, clients, etc. But when it's so symbiotic, when, yeah. when there's such different kinds of placements. So I believe we have, we have VCs. We have lots of students who are in chief of staff or founders office roles. We have a lot of students who are product managers, marketing and sales, data. I even saw operations, yes, which I did not expect, which is quite interesting. We, we'd love to double click on that. But I think it's essentially like when you want to start a company now in the future, like one of the students, if they want to, they have all those skills in their cohort. Right. Not everyone's a consultant. I think that's, that's so interesting. And you can dial up someone 10 years down the line and you know by then he would be an expert in his field. And you can really just launch a new market. Or there's someone, for the first time, we had someone who went into the Dubai market. Yeah. And uh, awesome. imagine like, you know, if now as his cohort mate, I have to just launch something in the Dubai market, he will be my go-to person, Jordan. right? So, so the first one was, of course, the VC offers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think six or seven VC offers yes. we have had. I think these include like small VC firms, large VC firms, Indian VC firms, international mm -hmm. VC mm -hmm. firms. I think we have the entire gambit covered. We do, we do. Right, that's quite interesting. And then the second thing is, I think that we're very proud of, I think both of us is the international placements. At mm -hmm. least we got started there. Yes. Uh, yes. I know it's very hard to get, you know, visas and mm -hmm. all of these figured out. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the beginning, 
we try to get all of our students <laughs> canadian visas you remember australia and canadian visa yes. canadian visa so at least we can start applying yes. which is a great uh, uh, i think start but we have to figure out how to finish it but i think just by itself from serendipity this dubai offer came in from talabat yes which is so interesting i think there's another one right uh, there's one girl who's gone into a remote role with a us company and uh, uh, so she'll her, be earning in dollars but exactly, staying in india exactly okay. exactly so uh, again life's really good i'm sure true. and she'll have lo- like her visits in us and she'll get trained etc so you get the so, best of both worlds so you're getting the best of both worlds you you're getting to stay with your family still so so then six vc offers a couple offers internationally mm-hmm. and then i think a big chunk of the offers are in the chief of staff founders office category yes And I think we are the category creator there. We are the category creator. I don't creator. think yeah. this term existed on placement reports in India. At not least I'd not seen it when not I joined you. Where I was like, uh, what, what is, is this? this? Yeah. <laughs> And people would ask that he had some role. Hai. You know where this role came from? No, I'm I'm not so sure. So the chief of staff is actually a position in the White House. Okay. Right. So he's sort of the executive secretary, not assistant. Hmm. Executive secretary of the president. I see. So he represents the president, but the president is not there. So it's a White House term. Right. That then got adopted by some American startups, hmm. and now some Indian startups have started. Right. So I think, what I think, thirty offers. Yes. Which are, think, slightly more. I, I, I think thirty thirty five offers in founders office roles. Hmm. I think that's perhaps the most impactful role one can have post MBA. You get to see the tech. you get to see the product you get to see of course the sales and marketing and most importantly you get to see how the founder is running the company precisely did you have a, a chief of staff when you were so we running? tried to hire multiple times but uh, we weren't as successful we didn't know master <laughs> <Masters> existed <laughs> then you know but to me uh, what's also interesting is there a lot of people who've had this vip experience who've gone through the entire outclass uh, the venture experience. initiation program experience. yes the venture initiation program and a lot of them are sure that they want to start up if not right away maybe after 2 years after paying their student loans etc and all of them are clear that this is the role which is going to let me sort of earn by lo- earn and learn, learn at the same time at, the, at someone else's expense but also like still uh make mm. me more prepared for where i want to be for me that's again very exciting because i know that we have like this uh line of entrepreneurs ready like in making in some way yeah, no absolutely <laughs> no i mean so like some of the companies that come to my mind i feel like to zerodha Yeah. I had another founders yes, office yes, person Anurag, yes, yes. and that's a very interesting story. It is how uh, his creator channel, uh, his creator challenge channel on yeah. YouTube and Instagram, uh, got him that interview, and then finally closure. He'll be working. There's actually uh, there's also one more side story which I okay. learned uh, okay. just very recently. I think Zeroda is now planning to probably uh, think of. that as a like you know he's also trying to promote that within the zero dha culture oh interesting okay so, this concept of uh, creating the create the, the the thought is that you know there is a segment of customers uh, who zero dha has and of course it's a large segment but uh, there is a segment of uh, people who are left behind because they are those digital oh, first see, uh, individuals and for them like you know this kind of social media presence becomes ex- extremely important Quite. So, so I think I hope Anurag is helping them well with it. That was his idea. Oh, I'm saying that he's okay, the one who he's, oh, he's okay, propagated okay. that in Amazing. the company. It's not uh, something that uh, was on top of the leadership's mind, and uh, now he's like sort of pushing uh, the idea. And I think there's a lot of validation. What's interesting about Zerodha is that I remember that in some episode in some huh. podcast. Nitin Kama had actually said that I do not recruit from MBA schools. Oh God! <laughs> right, and I think. Anurag is now the second person he has hired from Masters Union. Yes, he has in his founder's office. Yes, which is so interesting. And he's already taken my cohort, uh, the new cohort's data, and he's like, "Well, oh, wow, are the people okay. ready to join?" Oh, really? Okay, okay, that's already started. <laughs> yes, and yes. I believe that was also one of the first offers. I think his offer came in January, yeah. only, right? It very was early on. very early on in the very entire process. On. I know that some of the companies that have given these offers, some of them are large. I think we have an academy. We have. A couple others, then we, we have Citibank this have, time. Yeah, no, I'm talking about founders office. Okay, so the founders office, founders role, office yes. roles. I think we have Zepto is going to come for the course. first time. So they yes. have taken founders office. Yes, uh, that's a good one. Zepto is a, I mean, what an amazing company. Correct. Uh, I think they've taken two people in. Yes, Zepto is taken two, and then they came back uh, just last two months ago that we're hiring more people, and our students have done exceptionally well. Was the words of the HR. All right. Um, uh, so again, for me, that's again a lot of validation when the HR calls. From the front, saying that, "Hey, I need more people." I'm like, this is what makes my life yeah, easier. No, absolutely, <laughs> that solves uh, solves for many other problems correct, in the future. Correct. I think 
Then there are also some like early stage startups yes. uh, where I think the series A, series B, series C is happening. And a lot of Sequoia companies, a lot of Nexus Ventures companies, lots of these start, uh, you know, VC funded uh, early stage startups have also recruited this chief of staff kind of roles. I know Gyanoveda, Salil's gone there. Yes, Gyanoveda. Gyanoveda, sorry. Yes. Uh, I get that wrong always. <laughs> I think he was so excited when he got that offer. Yes. I think. Hike again, you know. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. Um, That's a large before, one. Before going into hike is hike. another one. Then we had people going to Cars 24. Yeah. Um, Bharat Pay, we of had course, some yeah. students go there correct, as well. Correct, so, I mean, uh, I am most proud of and also most jealous <laughs> of all the students who are going to get this, uh, you know, front row view mm. to how a company is run. Right. I think that's the best you can sort of do after an MBA. So imagine, so for all the viewers, you know, imagine that you get to like live, breathe your life with Pratham. That's what the chief of staff <laughs> so, would yeah. do. That's <laughs> probably not the best thing. <laughs> uh, but there's so much learning, right? So like you're getting a insider into the CEO's head yeah. and you're seeing him get things done through through different parts. Sorry. It's like this massive ship has to float together, together and someone has to make sure that that's happening. Office now took so many people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So Even many questions. also in founder's office. Yes. yes. Himant, I think. Uh, Hemant is there, Pragya is there, is there, there, there yeah. this is someone who went in the uh, law part of the company as well. Yeah, yeah, Kunark. Kunark, yes. There you go. And I think that's truly the job of a careers advisory team mm-hmm. is not just to match students with the right opportunities. It's also to go and educate the recruiter right. as to what is the right role for our students, where our students can help you the most. Absolutely. I think that's completely missing from, I think, placement processes world over. Even I think at Wharton, as far as I can remember, that wasn't the case. Companies would come, students will apply, they will get in, done. Right. There was no placement team that was actually reaching out to companies, pitching specific students to specific companies, matching in a way that actually makes sense. Right. It's, uh, I think, I think like the placement team model that we have, mm. I think that's something that I'm very proud of. And the way it's come up in the last couple of years, it's so, so enriching to the student's life. So I'll actually mention one more thing, which actually came to my notice just uh, recently, is that... Uh, typically in most colleges in India you'll see that it's a student run place come and I have a lot of respect for that there's obviously nothing no taking away from the amount of hustle that goes into it I've seen my own classmates at NSIT uh, being in place come and working day in day out to get the entire uh, cohort placed but at the same time what becomes unavoidable in such scenario is that these place com members become in some way superior humans within the cohort Uh, one there's a lot of power dynamics difference which uh, which is not what you want within your class I would say and it's sort of unfair for people who are not part of Placecom simply because they didn't choose to be part of it and the second is that I think there have been times when a company came and the rest of the cohort did not know yeah um, so again that. that that might be slightly unfortunate for those who did not choose to be in Placecom uh, what students love here is that there is no one who is not intended to do the right thing for the yeah. student all the interests are aligned. Exactly. So everybody consistently is just working to make sure that we're doing what's right for our student, being there when they need us. Uh, I remember Shivani came to us uh, when she had both those offers, you know. There's a matter and a uh, Exactly. Yeah. So that's a great problem to have. <laughs> that's a great problem to have. But um, like she, she came in with those two offers and, uh, and I, was, uh, I was like, you should do what you think is right. absolutely right for you. And she was very mindful. She said, you know, where do you have a stronger relationship? Mm. I want to make sure. You're like, no, you should do what is right. Right. Yeah. And that's what our job is, right? To be those guiding lights in some way that you do the right thing and let's do it professionally. Let's make sure that we're keeping all parties informed. Let's make sure that we're being respectful of the time that's been spent on the placement process. Yeah. But also not shortchanging our own students, students. and their career and their dreams. Yeah. Because even if she joined the other place, she might just leave in three months. Three what months. would you do then? Yeah. And I think one offer was actually much higher than the other one. Th- and she actually chose the That's a lot of time one. that happens, yeah. which student just yeah. does what is right for them. But this time, you know, I'm also very proud of the students who actually took up a lower offer, mm-hmm. but a better role Correct. Or, or more suited role. There is Correct. no better, or, you know, worse, but a more suited role. People did not run after money. I mean, that, that probably took away from some of the <laughs> numbers in our averages. Right. But, uh, but at the end of the day, the students are much more happy. But Pratham, that is exactly what I'm saying that why should that average number be glorified yeah. beyond its due respect? I mean, yeah. of course, as a campus, I want my student to do well, but it should not be over and above everything else because then I, as the director of the MBA program, is optimizing for the wrong thing. Wrong thing. You're optimizing just for the number and not for 
the actual career that the student the deserves the fulfillment the right fit uh, the excitement everything yeah no but you know obviously we should also address the fact that this was a tough year oh god yes this was a tough year not just for masters union but i am even what in hps i've heard stories from friends that even there the situation is not very good because they were very dependent on consulting firms right the consulting firms did not take as many people or had delayed offers mm. uh, i think the ppo conversion came down from 70% to like 30% in most iams we also had a tough time we did i mean we, i think your team yourself the students most importantly i think if not if not three times at least two times the amount of work has been put in in the last i mean what is your read how much longer is this going to be the case so i'll tell you when did the uh, when when did this get real real for me i saw one of my stanford career advisory member you know and i have a lot of uh, love and respect for her she had posted uh, that you know uh, we are excited to see if people are going to recruit etc to me that was like alarming because i've never seen yeah. uh, stanford do that and and i'm sure like as a college they're doing the right thing for the student mm. as well but that in some way told me that you know the problem is actually dire and uh, it's very hard for me to crystal ball sitting here that you know how much further is this going to go but what i have realized pratham is that and probably why we've still had a decently like you know we have very few people we have some students who are continuing to uh, search for jobs yeah look uh, for better roles yeah precisely but uh, what has worked is that i think the market will never stop looking for the right people mm. there'll be you know you'll you'll probably stop hiring uh, the plus ones where you know you're building that extra layer of cushion where you uh, where you're building for maybe Five years down the line, or three years down the line, where you're training your uh, candidates, etc. But I think there's a lot of demand for very high quality talent yeah. at this time because the situation is really, really dire. Yeah, yeah. So every company is looking for the right person, right and people were ready to spend for that right, right person. So you're saying, in some ways, of course, the economy being in a downturn is is makes things harder for us. But at the same time, if you have good folks, it actually is a this advantage or an unfair advantage that we have it does give an unfair uh, mm-hmm. advantage and i think those founder office roles where the person knows now the founder has to make very very meaningful calls very very tough decision has to you know maybe take the com- uh, the company through a 360 degree change in mm-hmm. some way um, so you need people who can do that with you okay let's let's talk about two things one i want to talk about you know how the placements and the placement process at masters union actually works mm-hmm. right of course i mean in, the understanding is that you know there is this group of 60 companies that come every year mm. and we host them and then you know they would make certain offers mm. at masters union that's not how it works yeah right we look at the students we see okay these are the students and these are the kind of companies that they'll be the right fit for and then we proactively reach out to those specific companies right right and and that way the universe of companies that we are targeting is unlimited right as compared to just hosting 60 companies on day 0 and 20 companies on day 1 and 10 companies on day 3 mm. you know you know what i mean no absolutely so so you know what's interesting is that we'll have all types of students mm. right out of the 163 students that we had in the batch that's graduating in 2023 there were there was a pool of people who came in very clear that mehak i want to go in the legacy companies yeah. and for me i know very clearly that legacy is going to get cracked in the 0 1 2 method because that's how the they is. go to all the business schools and your bcg or the tabla your city correct so then i know that you know there's part of my students who wants that then there's a part of my student who really wants to you know explore a lot of roles take up life projects take up internships etc so for me it's very important that my systems are robust to not have a cookie cutter approach mm. in any way and you can really personalize and customize to whatever extent possible mm. and that's where the journey for preparation to me becomes very critical mm. uh what i want to make sure is that when you are going in front of the recruiter uh what i measure my team for is that how many interviews did my student have to appear for before he gets a convert mm. and to me if we are able to keep that number low that becomes a way for us to you know judge your performance correct yeah. correct and the beauty is that the team keeps giving feedback you know maybe you're not ready yet so why don't you take some more time to get prepared mm. and that's another thing which your 0 1 2 day 0 day 1 thing cannot provide because okay what if i felt sick on that day 0 yeah. day 1 day 2 yeah, yeah. the game's over for me for like a lot of for long time and that's yeah. not, fair. not fair so so then i feel it has to be that customized approach where you cannot put undue pressure on the student for 
performing on that very minute it's just very very unfair right. and i know that we tried this experiment where we actually ran ads mm-hmm. on linkedin mm-hmm. and and you know i think we 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 were making that decision it was a tough decision because to advertise for placements mm-hmm. is something that people might perceive on, wrongly yeah, or yeah. might frown upon but we actually had some really good successes we did. from it right and including a chief of staff role at uh, i think twin yes and twin I that, and yes uh, i think that role or that jd came to us completely through a linkedin ad so as masters union we posted an ad on linkedin saying we welcome you to come and recruit at masters union mm-hmm. and we actually had a closure i was like that was the happiest we had four or five closures oh, okay we had five yes. closures wow uh, with four or five different companies so this is again an example of not fearing to do what's right for the student yeah. right at the end of it if we feel this will help the student get to the right company then i'm also okay to put myself out there and how many chros did we host this year oh my god you know because you can't just go to somebody and say hey place my students take correct, my students correct. right like you have to build that relationship you have to warm up to them i think more than relationship and warm up pratham i would say we are challenging the stereotypes in so many ways that's almost unbelievable until you see it in action mm. until you interact with a couple students. of students on the campus see the classrooms interact with the professors with the team etc because think of it we are in our third placement report yeah. our averages are beating a lot of top uh, b schools consistently our students are outperforming we've had students who've gone into building startups have featured on shark tank yeah. uh, gotten money from piyush and uh, aman. aman in the process have hosted people like deep kalra who are like i am blown away by this process yeah. so to me this is a magical place that we are creating and to believe that something like this exists you right in your backyard yeah, you it's very see. hard it's just that problem of not being able to imagine the mammoth moment that we are creating here absolutely yeah i mean i couldn't have put it in any better way i mean it's it's such a magical place right do you have to come visit and i welcome everybody I yeah mean, the doors are always doors open doors are always right? open but i think like i was just looking at the list it's in the placement report yes yes i think we hosted some 30 35 chros and 30 35 is the names that we've put there oh, okay, okay. there's a list of 100 plus oh wow okay chros cxos that we've hosted in Amazing. the last one year at the minimum the, at the minimum yeah and i think i think that's also the amount of f that showcases the amount of effort we put in mm-hmm. into into placements and you know one thing i also want to knock upon is why do you think our students end up doing so well right mm-hmm. i mean to be very honest not all of our students are 99.99 of course not all of our students are 800 on gmat right mm-hmm. yet when it comes to interviewing at the same companies mm. um, you know that are going to iims as well our students end up performing if not better at least equal right mm-hmm. so what is it in the curriculum that you know the chros might have told you in feedback sessions that helps our students you know be able to crack all of these things so the first thing that really stands out is the willingness to just roll up their sleeves hmm. and get their hands dirty so that attitude and i think and i was talking to nalam nay and she puts it very beautifully okay hmm. she's like this chaos that we create in terms of uh in class and the out class hmm. and all the venture initiation program and all the hustle that's yeah. going on it's almost maddening when you're in the process in the mba uh, like when you're in yeah. your journey in the pg journey but you get so good at brutally prioritizing your calendar mm. at brutally prioritizing what absolutely needs to be done at mm. what time etc mm. that you become good at okay if this is important let me just deep dive and get it done yeah so that is one thing that i feel so rigor is, rigor so is, huh? there's rigor there's uh, depth there's our students have sold uh, banjara market stuff in the in in like you know cyber cyber, cyber uh, hub and all so i think there's no shame left in the end yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. like kuch bhi kara lo i think that's what i was going to say i think we, uh, most of our students if not all would be shameless sales people i agree which is what every company needs and i love it yeah. i think every company needs those people if you have an idea and if you have to get it validated you have to push through the door and make it agree uh, you know you have to agree okay. uh, to get that idea done if you want to get new sales if you want to get a new product launch if you want to like anything at all you have to sell consistently and and what about like the fact that every student hmm. has run at least two or three companies hmm. during the year right one as part of drop shipping they mm. have to do it right. one as part of vip you have to do it mm. and then more probably consulting, consulting garage, garage, life et cetera. projects etc now 
as you have run a company you have seen how a product is built how mm. a product is marketed how customers will give you bad feedback right you know how you know if you have to ship something it will not reach on time and you will get a bad google review and then you have to go and neutralize that google review now all of that students have gone through do you think that's one of the reasons that the chief of staff roles is something our students are able to crack and impress the founders so it's almost like we've created this as a company Okay. It's a simulation of, of what's going to happen in real world, and you've kept the stakes average still. You know the stakes not too low. Mm. It's not insanely high with a multi-billion-dollar company's re- revenue, etc., uh, on your shoulder. But at the same time, you've created a simulation of real world mm. that you have to do a product launch. You have to write a PRD. You have to work with the engineer. You have to work with the design team. Work on the Figma, etc. So I think you have reduced the unknowns in some way, mm. or you've at least told him that you know if such a situation comes in real life, you are ready to put your hat that okay, this is how I'll navigate it. So in a way, let's say a fresher comes to Masters Union yes. with zero work experience. Huh. That one year he spends in Masters Union, at the minimum, that's one year of work experience. Exactly, and which is where so I'll I'll take an example, and I'm forgetting the girl's name, but uh, there's a student who's a fresher who went into Olive Oilman. Mm-hmm. And uh, she had a gap in between her oh, uh, profile. Yeah, yeah, from Mumbai. Right. Yeah, she's from Xavier's or uh, correct, Nancy correct. Mujhi, yeah. So she had a career gap, and she was very worried that you know how am I going to actually get into a good role, etc. But uh, kudos to her, Pratham. She went on to Kaggle. She kept doing a lot of data sets, built a lot of portfolio. And she did not come from a data background. She did not come yeah. from a data background. Yeah. She had done data in her undergrad, but did not do a job there. Mm. Felt that she understands numbers, but has never worked on it. Yeah. But uh, just went on to build her portfolio. And uh, Oliver Wyman is a top consulting of firm. Of course, yeah, it is. I don't think it even visits uh, colleges. At least they didn't visit us, but uh, she just got her foot in the door and uh, just made it happen yeah. through those. And the interview process was grueling in every yeah, way possible. There is no way you could have fluffed through it. Mm. You really needed those hard skills behind you yeah. to be able to get through that. So, like essentially, you know, when you go to college for two years, and then you always say that that is two years of work experience I don't have. Mm. But the curriculum here, I think, basically makes it the other way around. Other way around. That Correct. this is a work experience. In fact, it's accelerated work experience yes. because you're doing so much more. So I'll tell you, Devita's portfolio that she created. Ah. So Devita is in uh, going to do VC Antler, yes. VC role at Antler, and she also had another offer. Yeah, I'm not going to name companies here. We're going to make enemies. Okay, so another, I'm not going to do that. Another VC fund, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm not going to name companies now, uh, but her portfolio, the click rate of that in terms of if if there's any HR I'd shown that portfolio to, almost every single HR wanted to interview her yeah. right there, right then. Yeah. And looking at her success story, so many of her classmates got motivated. That wow, it's a great way to showcase my story. Yeah. Another student of ours who's now gone to uh, Crick Buzz, uh, mm. Rajshree. Raj, Rajshree. 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 He had gone all in and created like a poem for Zomato. He yeah. did actually. Created an ad about their inter intercity delivery, etc. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and like he hustled really hard uh, for Zomato, and then you know ultimately the role wasn't fitting, etc. Uh, but ultimately went into Crick Buzz, also Just, very very yeah. great, of course. But to me, that's the real hustle that separates my students from uh, what's there, and it's not served to them on the platter. No, they are literally going and breaking those uh, glass doors and getting themselves inside and once you get inside they are actually yeah. who was that student who made that video um pitching himself and saying please uh, he was talking to the founder oh, right. of the camera yes, oh, i'm yes. getting his uh, name i hope you like that video so see the hustle in that video mm-hmm. he says hey listen i have a great cv show but i want to do a important role in your company mm-hmm. so give me a task and then judge me for the results of my task correct So, which founder will say no to that? Correct. I I sent it to so many of my friends that video, and everyone was like, "Ha, bhej desko. Hmm. Ha, bhej desko." Correct. And at the end, also, I think he had two, three, four offers, and he was trying to figure out which one to take. I don't, I don't know where he went finally. But so interesting. I mean, the hustle is, is hmm. and also, you know, we should give students credit because a lot of maybe twenty, twenty-five roles were cracked by students themselves. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. They did not come through campus, mm-hmm. right? And which is how the entire placement system in the US actually works. and which is how it should be because you know once you found that role that you truly aspire for 
it is so customized to your need that you are bound to excel in it. Yeah. You are only the unique you who's competing for that role or the entire cohort of 163. uh because you have the relevant experience you have the passion for it etc and there's so many and uh vibhor story again is very interesting where you know his uh, vip idea was in the gaming space yeah, yeah. and then he approached hike because of course hike is uh, india's one of the largest uh, fastest growing gaming company and uh, it was just like a instant fit, fit. uh i i can't even abhishek abhishek uh, yeah. is similar even our ampm prabhu is similar where yeah. you know uh he had an offer from the campus and he got almost a 4x offer yeah. uh you know outside by of himself, campus yeah. by himself so i think if you were to look at the offers that students crack by themselves i'm sure that average would be higher than the campus average I, and we have no qualms in accepting that i am proud we are to proud accept, of that i am proud to accept that and that's it's consciously a strategy that we as place uh, placement committee Uh, or the placement team takes that you know this is what we'll motivate you for and we'll prepare you in the process like you know we'll help you wherever you need our help it doesn't mean that we've left you out in any way but uh, we'll take you to the right place you'll you know you know if you want any referral also we'll help you help there you. but uh, i think that mindfulness of choosing the role yourself yeah. that goes a long way i think also i've heard a lot of students always talking about practicums and last mile prep mm. you have to explain these two concepts to me <laughs> Okay so I'll start with a very interesting story okay huh. when I because last year we did not have any VC no. roles I did not have that even in the top of my head initially so the story of how VC roles came into being this year becomes very important because MUIF which is our uh, investment, you know, fund. investment fund uh they hosted a mixer on campus mm. how that happened is uh, one of our mentors uh, he's from the VC world Uh, I'm not sure if I should name his name, so I'm like oh. Jivraj. Yeah, Jivraj. Yeah, that's no, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Jivraj uh, was mentoring these students as to how do you invest, and they did a couple of investments uh, along with the syndicate, etc. Uh, what came out of that is that you know always to, uh, we always teach students to be more greedy, you know, and I love it. I I'm like or mango thora, you know, uh-huh. so that you can What you now? can grow a little bit more. So they they were like uh, Jivraj, we want more people to be on campus. He's like, let's do a mixer, and he made it happen. Yeah, with the I student remember, effort, right here, right outside, right yeah. here, and there were seventy, uh, eighty VCs, early stage founders, investors. Yeah. The Dineout founder, he was an investor in one of our student companies. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, which uh, we found out. The, the which we found out yeah. at the mixer was so surprising, and he called that student up. He's like, the master's in Bulls 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so that to me that was incredible because so many students ended up. um finding you know these summer internship equivalent like through projects, just networking through like on network. campus yes. yeah it's so beautiful and that's when we actually requested jivraj and one or two more people who came to the campus to come to the campus more regularly to take that practicum for students to get ready for vc, VC roles. roles so that you know they understand so it was sahil and jivraj and yes. who led the vc practicum correct, thanks correct. guys by the way appreciate <laughs> so i think they were able to let them understand you know what goes in inside the role because i truly feel that if you are mentored by the right set of people it's it's information asymmetry at the end yeah. of it right so if you have the right information if you have the right connections you are able to get a foot in the door so they took a very structured vc practicum mm. which is happening now again in the next is the yeah. highest rated practicum, practicum in all of our practicums so practicums are essentially courses so practicums are essentially courses that are solely focused on getting you to your right dream role so we have for every domain that my student wants to go to we will have a practicum which is being taken only by someone you know who who's not very removed from the entire uh, like you know i don't want like some, the ceo yeah because yeah. then you know the ceo is thinking in a different direction, direction yeah. i want someone who's maybe four five steps ahead of my student and who remembers uh, what who the remember. process exactly yeah. that's very critical right now today if someone asks me what happened in your nsit time will be very far away for me Correct. to rec- recall but how to get into stanford you can probably help exactly yeah. exactly so so that is practicums for us now after practicums also like you know now suppose uh, you have an interview with your dream company and uh, this always the sense of you know final mocks final uh preparation that needs to happen and that's what we call last mile preps because we want to ensure that you ace your interview every single time mm. uh that's what uh, there's a team and the team is actually being led by someone who was uh, uh uh avp at blue smart she's worked in jibong oh, yes, she's course, worked yeah. in amazon so someone who's again coming from the business world and understands what the student needs to work hard on can give them real feedback give them very brutal feedback sometimes but at the end of it it's right for the student yeah no it, it just uh, 
and, and so that's practicums and last mile prep this is the last Achha, this, prep. this one was yes. Yes, the practicum is the um, like you know the professors sharing that and in some of the practicums you know the format is that he'll start with let's all go through the job description of this role first and okay start from start, start from, from the end. really what yeah. you want to go to because then only then you know that okay these are the skills that i have and these are the skills that i need to build that gap analysis also becomes very important so that's the first class when you practicum okay. then let's go through 10 of the jds of this role in the top companies that you want to go into okay. so now i want to just cover two more two more things and mm-hmm. then we'll we'll end the podcast first is that um, this year our average ctc did not increase tremendously from last year mm-hmm. i think we increased by less than 5 6% which is reflective of the market mm-hmm. i totally understand but can we now discuss a little bit about the averages the top 20% the mm-hmm. bottom 20% the middle 80% i think those are questions that i'm sure the audience has sure and i'm keeping the averages for the last uh, but i think we almost hit 34 lakhs i think this time yes okay i will have to take the averages <laughs> i hardly remember all the numbers i believe it's around uh, it's uh, it's around 34.06 yes. yeah so mm-hmm. i think the average ctc is there and and you know while i encourage like i said that you know for me uh, these are just numbers and the stories behind it is so important yeah. we'll discuss it nonetheless yeah. because that's what uh, people would want to still know about yeah so if i look at the median ctc we're looking at something like 33.01 mm. and uh, the highest ctc is where i was not very happy about the fact that we got audited pratham i'll be very <laughs> honest <laughs> about it because the highest ctc in the report is 67.33 which is the right one huh. if i look at just the first year esops like we always do yeah but the actual on paper offer of that student is 1.04 crores yeah I, so i know about that that's okay <laughs> that's okay see you know i mean the highest doesn't even matter i agree yeah. i agree <laughs> it doesn't even matter because that's one student and correct. i believe that was self sourced mm-hmm. that wasn't even through campus um, correct and uh, uh, you know i think it skews the numbers too much mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if i had it been 1 crore our average would have been maybe 35 <laughs> or something i think for me um, why the numbers still mattered is that i want more people to believe that they can Do it. achieve more and more mm. so it's about knowing that this is doable, doable. from here right yeah. here you can do you can aim for this yeah. and that's why i and my entire team are now aiming for many of these and you know the true test is when we'll have that first year number being 1 uh, crore yeah yeah i'm which sure which i'm sure we will achieve yeah it's a matter of time it's a matter of time it's a matter of uh but that's something i'm incredibly proud of the student to have done and he also was working with that company during his uh, like he was doing live like project like a live project oh, exactly wow. which is where being able to negotiate such a high number uh becomes you possible you can do it I exactly. mean, you, you have some standing yeah, to be able to negotiate yeah you've proven your uh, worth to the company otherwise being able to negotiate such a high number yourself might be actually this difficult. year i know i think mean, like it's an insane number of people are doing live projects what i'm mean, almost saying one half or one third so i think uh, ha- more than a little more than the half people are a little more than half of our students because we saw live projects working so well uh, so then we actually brought it as part of our uh, outclass activities uh and like you know sort of uh, institutionalized it uh so that more and more students are doing it and there there are people who are doing it with microsoft the people who are doing it with a lot of startups so so that's happening as yeah. well the uh, top i don't know if we at the top 10% or we at the top 20% i think so we have uh, top 25% of the uh, average ctc is at uh, 44.76 again yeah that's that's so, i think similar as last year precisely mm. it's yeah it's very similar mm. and uh, again the bottom 25% average ctc is uh, around 21.61 mm. and and i've looked at this number that you know um, people with less than one year experience a lot of them fall in this bracket and which is which totally is great fair. just yeah. totally fair but also i feel like i know I, 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 there are some students who had better offers mm-hmm. but they took a sub 20 offer also because they just love the company that yes, much yes yes right and sometimes also about the location i know some people have compromised on the ctc for a favorable location Correct. because they know in that city they will not have to pay rent because they live there or whatever right and that also and i feel it's about making the choice which really does suit you the most if your family is there it's not just about the rent right yeah. you're getting to stay close to your family i know the balia that's money, like some things money can't some buy some things money can't buy pratham <laughs> yeah. so so for me i think that's beautiful like if someone asked me to, i had left us to come to india to, to be, be with my family yeah. that was the only reason correct. right correct uh, also i was very bullish on india, india. that was yeah. also Solution. a big reason but it worked out right that's the point um so yeah i mean I the numbers look great numbers are i think there and 
I think we've already discussed the percentages across the roads mm-hmm. and across mm-hmm. industries. I think uh, one thing I wanted to touch upon is the divide between the base, the variable and the ESOPs. Mm. I think people always have this sense that the CTC figure is a mythical figure. Mm. Then nobody actually gets that. Mm. And I don't believe there's any placement report that actually clearly, transparently illustrates Mm -hmm. that what percentage of the offer is base. Right. So I believe for us, it's 74, 75% is the base, right? That's what you're going to get in your hand. Yes. So 75%, which is 25.54 is what we're looking as your um, base salary. Mm. And then uh, another 14% is what we're looking at first year ESOPs. Like I mentioned again, it's not the four year ESOPs because usually companies give out four year ESOPs. ESOPs. Um, So that again amounts to 4.76 lakh. And then the variable, which is mostly your performance based variables, etc., is going to be another 10% of the CTC, which is like 3.4 lakh CTC, uh, 3.4 lakh. But you know, my sense is that there are so many different ways to calculate CTC. Mm-hmm. Like we use a certain methodology. Right. The auditor uses a different methodology. I think our numbers were actually different from the auditor's number. They increased the number actually <laughs> a little bit. But it's, it's in, and every other college uses it in a very different Correct. way. So, you know, just by virtue of the fact that there is no fixed formula to calculate CTC, we should not compare CTCs of one college to another. Precisely, it's not an apples to apples mm-hmm. comparison uh, in any way at all. Mm-hmm. Because there are colleges which are taking all four years of ESOP. So, uh, which again that becomes, some colleges take uh, or some auditors also take the uh, the gratuity mm-hmm. uh, into it Correct. some colleges also take the medical insurance into it which is right. fair I mean right. like I, I can understand why so it, that, that makes sense so just just so that you guys know so that everybody knows that the placement reports are very specific to campuses it's very hard to compare one to another mm-hmm. right it's very hard to compare an audited one to an unaudited one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very hard to compare one that is drawn out by a place com right. versus one that's drawn out by a career advisory team. Right. right? Uh, it's so, so different. Um, I think one more thing perhaps we can touch upon is what's happening with our alumni. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we don't forget our alumni. <laughs> we have had two cohorts that have passed out, mm-hmm. you know, two years ago and one year ago. And, and we also try to keep a track of what they are up to. Correct. Right. And of course, you know, the, the, you know, last year the market was good. This year the market is not as good. Hmm. But I think like a majority of them have gotten promotions. I, what is the exact number? I think. So first of all, to to the point of remembering our alumni, we had two of our cohort one alumni who got married recently. Oh yeah, of on course. campus. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, with Mithai just, Dabas just today in the morning. <laughs> for us. Yes. So so I think. We don't forget our alumni and they don't forget us at all. Especially if they met on campus (laughs) and they got married after. (laughs) Correct, correct. Their uh, their wedding card had Master's Union uh, on it. (laughs) On it, the background had a sketch of Master's Union. That was so beautiful. It was, it was. Um, And and, uh, congratulations. You know, it's a great story of how they met. By the way, they're not the only one. There are many There are four couples in the first quarter. Business schools are known for that. So (laughs) this one, I would say is not unique to us, but it's endearing to see those relationships go beyond the campuses. Beyond the campus. No, but... You know, so much of the story of Masters Union Hmm. is also the story of India. Mm -hmm. You know, like how India is sort of breaking bounds, how India is sort of challenging status quo on on a global sphere and how India is doing business so differently, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's UPI or ONDC, etc. I feel like somewhere we could be as Masters Union, be the disruptor in the education space, Mm -hmm. you know, and then India is like a great place to experiment. I don't know if there could have been a master's union in the US. Mm-hmm. I agree. No, I agree. For me, I think the cause is very, very noble. And that's what like motivates me every single day to contribute to what we're building. Mm. It's very exciting. Mm. And we are truly a movement and not just a campus is how I look yeah. at it. But yeah, coming back to your question about, you know, tracking our alumni. I uh, think sorry. Uh, <laughs> we got <laughs> a little segue <laughs> there, segue, yeah. but uh, we're back. So quote of 2021, and these are again, uh, just to be very clear, these are self-reported. self-reported and numbers. We have not verified these. We have yeah. not verified uh, these numbers, but uh, you know, there's a 55% hike in terms of people who had gone in 20, who had graduated in 2021 uh, since their first year in the yeah. company. And uh, similarly, if I look at uh, year one promotions of cohort of 2022, uh, that's uh, coming to around 22%. Sure, so, they've just started working. Yeah. And uh, there was one number I remember very clearly where there was someone who got a 100% hike between their first and the third year. Oh, wow. And okay. uh, did exceptionally well. Yeah. So, so again, I think we do have some incredible success stories. stories. Yeah. No, I think for me, again, the most important success metric 
goes beyond placements, goes beyond anything. It just rests on how many startups our students are able to start. Mm-hmm. and then become job creators and not right. job seekers right startups and also there are interestingly some students who've gone back to the family offices yeah and i think to me that's also very important Absolutely. segment because a lot of time these family offices are being run by family businesses uh, huh? yeah like family businesses are being run they're already doing great but mm. there's so much scope for young blood to just come digitally transform change so the much can yeah. happen right So again, for me, that's another segment uh, which we're seeing this year, and uh, it could be a very interesting segment, Absolutely. sort of. And we have the uh, you know the business in India, sort of uh, business to billionaires club this time for the first time, okay. focused on uh, people who you know want to get into traditional businesses mm. because there's a lot of beauty in those as well, right? Where you are uh, driven by actual profits and uh, revenue, and you're solving a lot of these B two B problems. You're getting into manufacturing, etc. So to me, that's also a very exciting uh, segment. This this reminds me of Kashyap. Yeah, having gone to Trident, Trident. Oh, which boy, is uh, yes. as family business <laughs> a family business can get. Right. And um, and I believe he's uh, heading events and marketing there. Right? Yes. He and he just he just got, got a, yeah. We were going to say the same thing. You go ahead. <laughs> no, so he actually got an award in just his four month of yeah. being fourth month of him being there, and currently there's no CMO in the office. So he's taking a lot of decisions regarding events. It's a five billion dollar distant is, company. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, and it's they they did a partnership with Karina Kapoor. They had a massive event there. Okay, and uh, he was running the show. Huh? So he was running a lot of things uh, uh, with with the office. So to me, again, that's very endearing. And he's talking to me about like you know these different fibers that are going in the towel Achha. and. Uh, <laughs> you know what's the process and the assembly line and to me i was like wow this person does not come from manufacturing experience at all yeah. and has like just thrown himself into that problem and is trying to get everybody to think way differently mm. so to me again the impact that he's going to have in that organization is going to be marvelous yeah i know i, I, I remember his face suddenly And and I picture him in all the events on campus. He was yeah. the most active person. He was everywhere. He was. He was everywhere. And uh, and I think like there are some people who I see who are everywhere, who mm-hmm. are making the most of the master's unit right. experience. Yes. मतलब in 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 Hindi, you know, we call it like उन्हें निचोड़ दिया पूरा master's unit के पैसे वसूल किए उन्होंने. Yes. And then there are some people. I'm saying this very honestly and openly. Mm-hmm. who don't make use of the master student experience like there were some students whose face i had never seen mm. till the time of graduation i think like, you were in, you were even in the court <laughs> right and i feel like i mean some people could be introverted i can understand sure but but i really feel that um, if you make use of all the opportunities given to you i think your outcomes not just in terms of placements but just generally life will be so much better right. you're already here you already paid mm mm-hmm. Why not make the full use of it? But that's the mindset, you know. This mm. is precisely the mindset problem. कि सिर्फ placement लेने आया. Mm. So if you've come with that mindset, and and that's where you know I would with all, uh, with all due respect, say that that's not this place. Mm. If you want to come only for placement, this is this is going to come as an outcome. But please just don't come for only that. There are easier places you can go exactly, to to get a placement. Exactly, exactly, yeah. and you'll get done with the process in three days. No, three days, why, yeah. why go through this entire journey with us then? Yeah. So to me, I think I would say that come with a very open mind, and if you want to, and and you and I discuss about this, right? That we want people who want to shift orbits, and we want yeah. to help you shift orbit in everything possible. And actually, this might be a great place. I don't know if you're doing a podcast separately about the new logo. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of thought that's going yeah, into that. That's, so that's I don't know true. if you want to talk about this here uh, or other place. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, I think we should do a separate one. Sure. sure. <laughs> Because that's I think right, that's we, are, we are one week late doing. on our website okay, release. Okay. Don't worry about it then. But but yes, a new Masters Union identity is coming up. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> <laughs> so but i think the thought that's going behind the culture that we're building here the community that we're building here pratham for me that's what is the heart and soul of masters union uh that's what i think and that's that's coming from you in some way mm-hmm. that you know that's the embodiment uh that the place is uh, shaping into no i think at the end of the day we are just sort of holding the fort together mm-hmm. the fort is being manned by all the students i agree they are the build, they are the ones who build the culture and i go back to the first cohort mm-hmm. i think they really set the ball rolling on the mm-hmm. culture of masters union mm-hmm. right and and today if you put 10 students in front of me right and don't tell me which one is from masters union just by looking at the zeal in his eyes i can probably tell this person <laughs> is from masters union i agree right and and, and that to me is our biggest success right, right. 
that these people should continue to shift orbits wherever they're going and uh, let's just explore those. this shifting orbit thing okay. tell us more about how you think like what is this imagery of mm-hmm. shifting orbits so think of it this way that you know okay um before your undergrad maybe you your worth was x and then you did your undergrad you got one degree stamp and then you you know you get you get a new baseline that you know i'm assured that this is the baseline at which my lifestyle is going to be at hmm. uh and in every in every stage now there's some people who will continue to shift orbits simply because of their own effort irrespective of the environment they've been put in shifting orbits so uh, for those who have not studied chemistry and physics <laughs> yes so an electron shifts orbits right when it gets more excited or when Got more it. energy is put Got into it, it right it. and so when you're in a different orbit you're essentially at a different level at a different stage and a different baseline in your life precisely yeah. so and and i'm not measuring this only in terms of your monetary monetary uh, ability in any way at all mm. it's you know your personality it's about how you conduct yourself how you are as a leader uh why would people follow you mm. uh to me it's all of those, all those things, things and not just the monetary because i'm sh- i mean there's surely people who are earning the same amount of money but are they getting that credibility are they getting that followership uh because of the leadership style um so so to me the vision is that how do we create that place where we are teaching i mean of course once you've entered like before masters union and after masters union you would have shifted orbits massively and that's showing in our roi of course yeah. you know uh people are exiting with a 3.8x 4x kind of multiple for, from their pre mba yeah. salary but the journey cannot stop there so it's about how do we build that mindset where the student now knows how to keep shifting orbits for themselves where they create a mini masters union for themselves in the ecosystem through their friends through the community of professors long after they've graduated from here i think i think that's a great note to to rest this episode uh no i thank you mike i mean for for the partnership that we have enjoyed in the last one year and uh, you know how far we have come and uh, i think the team was two or three people yes. today we are like 30 35 people in the placements team I mean, the their part in placement prep, prep admin all, yeah, all, all, all yes. combined and um, and and I hope we don't have to grow the team too much more I don't think so uh, you know and and the students can themselves mm-hmm. uh, I really see a future where the placements team is not even necessary mm-hmm. where the students have that agency mm-hmm. to be able to just crack roles for themselves right. I think if we truly want to become top 10 mm-hmm. we have to start thinking like top 10 I agree right and Stanford Harvard Wharton Yale Stern Sloan NCAD LBS Northwestern Chicago they do not think in terms of average placement salary they do not mm-hmm. they think in terms of impact they think in terms of network mm-hmm. and I think we will have to graduate our mindset our team's mindset and most importantly what the students mindset mm-hmm. to stop thinking in terms of just the averages correct on that note thank you so much thank you so much uh, this was a lot of fun yes yeah it cleared a lot of things in my head also <laughs> thanks guys and uh, you can download the placement report in the description below <laughs> thank you yes.